huge WWE SummerSlam 2024 world title plans revealed. A WWE Hall of Famer is not happy with WWE Creative. A WWE tag team is pissed at missing recent live events. And a new WWE champion was teased over the weekend. Hello and welcome to the Solo Monday News. Myself, Andrew Pollard here at What Culture Wrestling. If you're wondering what I'm doing here and it's not a Sunday, basically think of that line of Paul Hayden against JBL of like, you're only champion because uh, for so long because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesdays. Hey, consider me the JBL in this conversation and consider the rest of our staff being the Triple H. So I'm here. You're stuck with me for today. Let's get into wrestling chatter and let's get into SummerSlam. Now, SummerSlam 2024 is shaping up for Gunther, the ring general, challenging Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, and there's a, a, maybe a, an inkling of what may go down at SummerSlam as Bet Online has Gunther a heavy, heavy favorite right now to walk out of SummerSlam with the World Heavyweight title around his waist. Uh, of course, you have to consider as well what SummerSlam is August the 3rd and then uh, August the 31st is Bash in Berlin in Germany. Now, Many people have kind of predicted that Gunther would either walk into Bash at Berlin, well, Bash in Berlin, sorry, as the World Heavyweight Champion, or walk out and be crowned that night as the World Heavyweight Champion. And right now, according to the bookies, it looks like Gunther is going to be walking into Berlin with the World Heavyweight title in his possession. Now, Gunther, of course, is an Austrian, but he made a major name for himself in Germany, uh, primarily with WXW. There was the, the Ring Camp stable, which it was just when Gunther was that, that guy, well, Walter was that guy that on the, the European scene where it's like, geez, man, this guy is, it's just so much fun to watch. And he just made that name for himself. And and obviously here he is now, fast forward a few years later in the best shape of his career, uh, one of the biggest stars in the business and seemingly on the cusp of becoming the world heavyweight champion. Uh, plans can always change, of course. And this isn't uh, a kind of an insider report where it's like, you know, such and such reports that W creative were planning for Gunther. This is just the uh, the bookies at the moment. Um, but bookies, I mean, they've been known to be wrong. Trust me. <laughs> oh, God. I remember one morning. <laughs> side story. Why not a side story on the Monday morning? Um, I do remember one of my uh, my pals uh, doing a little accumulator. Well, we all did a WrestleMania accumulator. And he had uh, Daniel Bryan to, uh, to defeat Sheamus. And there we go. That was over in what 18 seconds and ruin the whole accumulator so never bet betting is not clever anyway right um uh for me gunther as well it's uh, him as world heavyweight champion just feels right or him as a top champion just feels right uh, and also there's a really intriguing little thing for me as well and that intriguing little thing is john cena because john cena of course has announced basically his retirement tour through 2025 uh, I think that, that there's a story there. It's an open goal. They will do a story of John Cena going for that record-breaking 17th World Championship. And I think going up against Gunther will be a really, really fun challenge for that. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, Cena necessarily has to win, but just like that story there could be a lot of fun. But anyway, that's that's getting way, way, way ahead of ourselves. Um, speaking uh, of, well, I'm not really, there's no transition here. I'm just going to go Rikishi. Rikishi, my good pal, my close personal friend, Rikishi, follows me on Twitter and everything, um, is not happy with a WWE creative decision from Money in the Bank. Yes, speaking on the Off the Top podcast, the WWE Hall of Famer, Rikishi, uh, is unhappy that Jay Uso did not win the men's Money in the Bank briefcase. Now, of course, Rikishi is the father of the Usos and of Solo Sokoa. Um, but yeah, he's he's not not a happy camper, not a happy man. Uh, his words here, uh, as he put it, that kind of hits a nerve with me. I'm not go, I'm not asking or saying to give this kid a free pass because who he is and where he comes from. But I mean, again, I'm going to go back to the numbers. The numbers don't lie with Yeet, the merchandise that the Yeet Man has done so much for the company. The Yeet Man, he doesn't have a bad track record. The Yeet Man is not a liability. The Yeet Man shows up to work and does what he does. The only thing that comes to my mind is when you're not given a chance, but you go out there and you take it and you build it on your own. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And he goes on to talk about how Jay is, uh, basically how he's got over the crowd. Uh, it is, Yeet is over huge. Jay Uso's entrance is over huge. Bell to bell, it can be hit and miss. Uh, sometimes it's a lot of fun, other times it doesn't quite hit home. But yeah, there's no doubt in how over Jay Uso is. Uh, Rikishi also pointed out how Jay was on the Money in the Bank poster, holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. Well, what was it? Mun Yeet in the bank briefcase. Uh, for me personally, I, I did think that Jey Uso was, was the favourite uh, going into Money in the Bank. Well, not going into Money in the Bank. He was the favourite for the men's Money in the Bank match until Drew McIntyre was added to it. And then it was kind of, right, Drew McIntyre's going to win. And, and then you could kind of map out then and see what was going to happen, which was CM Punk. Not 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 costing him the briefcase, but costing him the cash-in moment, which was just so well done it's 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 a fun story but yeah so but, but before that before drew was added to that match i did have jay uso down as as the favorite for it because let's face it any big matches he's had he's come up short and it kind of felt like jay needs 
something. He needs that big win somewhere. I'm not even saying necessarily he'd cash in successfully, but just to win the briefcase would have been something. But it didn't happen. Drew McIntyre won. The, the briefcase was cashed in the very same night, and it was uh, it is now null and voided and out of the equation uh, entirely, which uh, which is fine by me because the money in the bank briefcase sometimes it, can, it gets a little bit old. I think at times, so it's good to like have it have it out of the equation now. But yeah, Rikishi not happy about that. Um, and another couple of people who have got some frustrations of their own are Angel and Umberto. Yes, Angel goes uh, Umberto Carrillo of La Gado del Fantasma. Uh, they um, have been a little bit frustrated because WWE, in case you were unaware. Uh, we're in Mexico over the weekend doing a couple of super shows. There was Friday in Mexico City. Uh, was it Friday? Yeah. No. Saturday in Mexico City. Sunday in Monterrey. Um, of course, uh, Friday. The big news coming out of those was the WWE debut of Stephanie Vacker, the former CMLL Women's World Champion, who made a debut on Friday, uh, beat Isla Dawn, and then again got another win over Isla Dawn on the uh, sorry, the debut on the Saturday, and then got another win over Isla Dawn on the Sunday. Um, but yes, yeah, Fightful Select reports that there's. Um, Basically, some disappointment about Angelo and Umberto for, for not being booked on these cards. Um, now, especially when you look at Monterey, that is both the, those guys. That is their hometown, is Monterey. So, yeah, obviously, you want to be booked in, in your, your home country, in your hometown. And to miss out on that is, yeah, it's going to be a little bit disappointing. And there is seemingly some frustrations there. Um, but WWE, from their logic, it was a case of, well, the cards are already packed. Uh, they, they were billed as super shows. And uh, Just looking at the, uh, the card here for... Uh, for last night's show in Monterey, it is pretty stacked. I mean, you could have still snuck in a, a little cheeky tag match for, for Angel and Umberto, I'm sure. But you had Sami Zayn uh, defending the uh, the IC title against Chad Gable. You had Bailey Bianca and Jade Cargill against Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler and Tiffany Stratton. You had uh, the LWO, Dragon Lee, uh, Rey Mysterio against Carlito and Dominic Mysterio. You had Damian Priest against Jey Uso. Stephanie Vacker against Isla Dawn. There was the Bloodline against Andrade, LA Knight, Randy Orton. And you had Cody Rhodes defending the uh, Undisputed W title against Santos Escobar. Bar. So it's a, it is a pretty stat card there, um, but again, you, to me, you, you could have fit a little tag match in there. You could have fit a little tag match in there, I'm sure. And one uh, one match that did actually happen though, as well, on the Saturday night in Mexico City, was Bailey defending her title, the women's title, against Bianca Belair. And we nearly, we nearly, nearly, nearly got a new champion, but it wasn't wasn't Bianca Belair. No, Tiffany Stratton. Yes, Miss Tiffy in the bank uh, attempted to cash in her briefcase, teasing a new champion because uh, obviously that show was was heavily talked about about the uh, the debut of, as mentioned, Stephanie Vacker for, for, for WWE. But yes, uh, you had Bianca Belair coming up short against Bailey, and then after. Afterwards, yes, uh, Tiffany Stratton's music hits. The crowd went absolutely nuts. There's videos of this uh, going all over the place on, on, on X. Uh, lots of Tiffy time. Tiffy, she's over, man. She's over. It's going to be it's gonna be such a big pop whenever she does cash in. Uh, I, to me, it could be as soon as, as SummerSlam. I'm, I'm kind of expecting that cash in at SummerSlam, whether that's on Nia Jax, whether that's on Bailey. Uh, but yes, Tiffany came to the ring, tried to cash in on Bailey while she was talking to the ref, doing the, you know, the prolonged, like, here's my briefcase. You really want to cash it in? Yes, I want to cash it in. You want to cash it in? Yes, which takes forever. While that was happening, Bailey attacked Tiffany from, from behind. Tiffany then got the better of things, and just when she looked to be uh, cashing in, maybe going for the pin, Bianca Belair came to the save, uh, came to the rescue, and then Tiffany kind of decided, yeah, nope, she noped out of there, I believe is the phrase, just like, slide away, take the briefcase, get back up the aisle away, I don't want any of this beef with, with the two of you. So yeah, to clarify, this was not an official cash in, it was just a nice little tease, and, and it, as I said, the, the crowd reaction was, was nuts, and it is going to be nuts whenever Tiffany Stratton cashes in, just, uh, it's one of those those cases those instances where somebody despite being you know a heel and doing all they can to get booed um it's just somebody gets over on sheer ability people see how good that, that person is and with tiffany stratton it's not she mentioned on smackdown she's only been in the business for three years and that is true i think it's it's like barely three years as well and to be this good in such a short spell of time is like it is absolutely nuts and the crowd recognizes that they see how good she is and of course the, the prettiest moonsault that is one of the smoothest looking finishing moves in all of professional wrestling i mean when you talk about you're doing all you can to get over as a heel and be booed if you've got that in your locker you're gonna get cheered whenever you hit that to, to be fair um but yeah i'm 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 thinking that's that cashing does come at SummerSlam, um regardless of who wins that match but that has been this morning's uh the solo monday news uh, unfortunately for you i will be back with the after news later on today but in the meantime be well be safe and i'll catch you in a bit